Sphagnum pea moss is a partially decomposed plant material. It's derived mostly from sphagnum moss species. Sphagnum peat moss is used as a base in all the products that Premier Tech Horticulture offers, whether it's ProMix, professional retail products, or even our consumer products. If we take a look at a sphagnum bog, essentially peat moss is harvested with vacuum harvesters. So they go over the surface of the bog and they basically vacuum up the peat. Within a bog, there's various layers of peat. So on the top of the bog, you have what we call our, our kind of our top moss, or our kind of professional quality peat, similar to what we see here. And then as we drop down through the layers in the bog to the bottom, you go from a nice uh, spongy kind of lightly decomposed peat all the way down to a dark, almost black decomposed peat. So in the upper layers of peat, as we can see here, this type of peat is extremely spongy. It's got very high water holding capacity and very good aeration. It's generally used in mixes designed for professional growing, so we can use it for different kinds of potted crops. It can also be used as a component for mushroom soil. This type of peat may have some peat chunks in it and some sticks, which are tree roots, which is fine. Again, as I mentioned, it does have a lighter color. So this will be more of a light brown or even like a tan color, depending on where it occurs in the, in the bog. And essentially there's two types of, shall we say, coarse or professional peat. Uh, essentially it's based on the type of screening process. So the coarse peat as we see here, would be used in the uh, mixes that are used for larger containers and cell packs. And then we screen that even finer so it's used for plug and germination purposes. So as we go down through the profile of the peat bog, we'll get to what we call the middle layers of peat. As I mentioned before, as we go down through that, the peat becomes a little bit darker in color. That's re represented as what we see in this container here. Peat gets a little bit darker in color because a little bit more decomposed. There's also a little bit more fine material in there. So it makes a really good component to be used for uh, consumer-based potting, potting soils because it has better water retention. Uh, it doesn't dry out as quickly. And also it's very good for conditioning soil in the outdoor situation. So a lot of our bales of peat that we sell uh, at, the, at the lawn and garden or at the mass merchants, that this is the type of peat you would use for that purpose. And as we go down through the soil profile a little bit further, we get down to the lowest layers, which will get into more of the black type of peat Black peat is really good to use as an amendment for soils. So essentially, in our product line, we will design products that actually are designed to be mixed in the soil. So for instance, uh, we'll have different soil amendments such, such as a three-in-one, where we'll use that black peat. Nice thing about it is it very easily increases the organic matter of the soil and it physically enriches the soil so you get good water retention. And also, if it's clay, you also get better aeration as well. The physical properties of the growing media, which we're going to kind of concentrate on, basically the grower type grade of peat moss, as I mentioned before, it has a spongy texture. So it retains a lot of water, but also has good aeration. Nice thing about it retaining a lot of water is you don't have to water quite as often, which makes it real nice, especially in hot, dry conditions. Since it has excellent air space, as mentioned before, you're going to get better root development. Plant roots need both air and water. So if they can access the air more easily, that's going to actually produce better root growth, which produces better top growth. Uh, so that can also lead to a faster plant finish if the plants are not struggling with lack of air. It, peat moss is a little bit hydrophobic, so we do have to add a wetting agent to help get it to wet. And it does, uh, it could, if the water pressure is a little bit high, it could compact a little bit over time. So just make sure you're not blasting the water into the container when using the product. As far as chemical properties, peat moss basically provides almost no elements whatsoever, whether it's plant nutrients or other undesirable ones. It has an electrical conductivity typically below 0.2 millimoles per centimeter, which is very low. Uh, as we know, peat is also very acidic. It can have a pH ranging from anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5. So we add limestone to adjust the pH upward, which is also an advantage of having that extra limestone in the mix because the limestone helps to buffer the pH so it doesn't drop. So it's a nice way to keep that pH more stable at, at the bottom end. Peat moss basically has a little bit of a moderate water hole or moderate cation exchange capacity. And what I mean by that is the ability to retain nutrients. I wouldn't depend on that. I would basically fertilize the needs of the plant rather than depend on that nutrient retention capability. It's also free of herbicides or any types of chemicals. So you don't have to worry about it causing any contamination in your crop. 
far as biological properties, it does come with a fairly low population of microorganisms, but keep in mind some of those microorganisms do provide some minor disease suppression, but there's very little to no pathogens provided. So basically, one last thing is it's also the ideal environment for growing biologicals. Uh, so if, for instance, we have active ingredients that we add to our products. Peat moss is a great material to use as an insulator for those, for those organisms.